trailer hey everybody this is uh jason rouse and welcome to the safe word podcast on the show all the way from orange county california uh jason rodriguez on the show today um i remember uh i'd run into you maybe i don't know maybe about four or five months ago mm-hmm. probably in front of the vulcan at the kill tony show or something, something like that something like that yeah and uh seeing that like oh you really didn't anticipate having to move out of California at any point in your career. You're like, show business is down the street. Mm-hmm. You know, or maybe I'll go to New York and do a play. <laughs> but how the fuck do you end up in Texas by yourself after doing comedy for four or, well, three years and three then you years. Moved, moved here? Yeah. I don't know. Just L.A. was like, I don't know. Because I was in Orange County, and the move in my head was always like, L.A. It's right yeah. there. My whole family's pretty much there already. It's mm-hmm. good. And then when the COVID happened, everything was like dead. And I was like, you know, I didn't have any notoriety at all. Couldn't get stage time. And then I remember visiting Austin. I think actually I met you at like Creek when they like before, when they were still building it. That might be it, yeah. I think I met you there. That might be it. And, like, when the patio, there's, like, no lights, and there's, like, some people hanging out. You can yeah. all just drinking and stuff. And I was, like, visiting. I was just visiting for two weeks, and, like, I fell in love with it. Yeah. I was, like, doing comedy again, more than I've had in the past, like, two years. And it was great. And I was, like, I need to be here. Yeah. I need to. When we, you know, going from, a, like, a regular comedy community and you're not only in the city you live in but just going to los angeles to come here and see that oh everyone here is from somewhere else too yeah so they're kind of like oh we're all kind of new to this new thing that's happening in this strange place Mm -hmm. yeah it's like a bunch of misfit toys yeah yeah and everyone's like just like about this almost everyone's like at the same level too of like time especially Mm -hmm. like in the open mic four years under 30 yeah Right? That's like the average. Um, the, like the, just, the white guys look like slobs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's, some, there's some slobby dudes. There's some slobby There's some slobby dudes. ones. Every fat white guy in this city's got dirt under their nails doing comedy. I just checked mine yeah. right now. I was like, do I? I'm good. And then there's like, what, about half a dozen female comics mm-hmm. and then a bunch of people that are just not funny yeah a lot of people that start like moved here to start yeah they're like i'm gonna move here i'm gonna figure it out along the way and they just get like chewed up yeah i've seen so much turnover that happens uh everywhere though mm-hmm. uh especially hollywood you like oh yeah with you know friends of mine said like a lot of you know after a year you're kind of in or out. Mm-hmm. You, no one really survives the year. Oh, shit. Yeah, they, they go in. You know, you, you're flooded with a city that's full of actors and actresses and that want to be comedians that are not really. They'll just do anything that will make them famous. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're here. I don't know. Uh, I think. Do they think they want to be famous here? I don't think so. I mean, mm. there's definitely some people, I think more delusional people, but mostly the people that moved here want to do stand-up. Yeah. And that's what's really cool. I think that's something that makes this community so much better. Do they f- think that they um, are going to be, once the opportunities open up, that they'll be part of those opportunities? There's a lot of delusions of, of grandeur. Mm-hmm. 
You kind of need it, though. You kind of need to be a little bit delusional. Well, yeah, you know, going and hanging out at the patio at the comedy store, mm -hmm. you know, you're telling me you're doing potlucks. Yeah. Like, that is nine times out of ten delusions oh, yeah. of grandeur. Oh, completely. Well, what was that like? Do you want to explain to everybody what a uh, potluck is at the comedy store? Yeah, it's like, it's their only open mic. They do it on Monday nights, and they draw, I think it was like 13. That's no, like, but you have to go there. Yeah. During the day. Uh-huh. And sit and wait super long line and it's like yeah. 300 people signing up for like 10 spots yeah and you it's just a bucket don't. it's a bucket yeah. they put the list Lottery. out yeah you never know I, w I went maybe like three months in a row without getting on and I've done it a few times in the past weekly like, looking. yeah weekly yeah, yeah. I go every week for like three or four months and I finally got it and it's like it's such an important thing because like you know, the Booker watches and other uh, bigger comics watch and then the entire like LA comedy scene yeah. watches you for like three minutes yeah they want to see the future of competition exactly yeah, yeah. and it's, sometimes it kind of feels supportive especially when someone goes up and who's like because sometimes people get on and like they have no business doing comedy mm -hmm. whatsoever so it's like they're, they're their first day in Hollywood and they just got lucky yeah and they just eat a dick and like I don't know there's some kind of sense of community with that too of like sure. oh, this guy's not ready yeah well you can clearly see especially after the first year you a grasp of like oh that person's you're just you're you're delaying the inevitable it's never gonna happen yeah. you've never been you cannot not know from if you've ever recorded yourself and listened to it there's an absence of laughter yeah how do you do that but those people will clog up the system yeah and it's a pain in the ass when yeah. some guy's scratching his asshole, mm -hmm. signing on the list. Yeah. Because he just rolled out of a van he's been living in. Yeah. And then eventually they'll start, like, booking a show. And they're yeah. like, oh, they're my best friend now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. They, uh, doing open mic comedy in Los Angeles is literally the worst place in, in the world to do comedy. Oh, yeah. They're so rough. Yeah, what was the worst thing you've ever seen? Because you get all kinds of crazies. Oh, completely insane people. Yeah. Like homeless people going up with like puppets and shit like that. Yeah. And it's just, it's terrible. And a lot of egos, people bumping other people. And then yeah. I remember there's there like a system sometimes where it's like $5 to do five minutes and then $10 to do 10 minutes. And rarely anyone would do that. Everyone would just do the five and just get out. And then every once in a while, a guy will actually pay $10. Yeah. And then make us suffer through his 10 minutes. Set. Yeah. He's clearly overextended himself to a degree that he thinks he can pull 10 minutes of comedy in front of a bunch of other two-year comics. Yeah. No one wants to see that. No. That's when you start throwing chairs. That's why, like, some audiences will boo. It was very difficult to get booed. I haven't been booed in a long Have you ever been booed? Never been booed, no. Ever been booed? No, I've had mean things said. I've had people say, get off the stage, but never yeah. like a full boo. It does suck when they say, get off the stage. Yeah. Yeah, silence is one of the worst ones. Yeah, I think I was, I did New Braunfels last week, and it's like very conservative, like crowd. And, and I remember, I, I think I made a joke because someone didn't see a movie I mentioned, and I was like, what if I threw the mic down and just like left right now? And one guy was like, you should. It's cut right through me. I was like, oh, thanks yeah. for the support, man. Okay. Yeah. No, there's some people that are closet comics themselves mm. that uh, are also good snipers. Yeah. He knew that was going to be a brick right in your fucking boat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Destroyed me. I was like three minutes in, too. I was like, I had to do like 15. I was like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, you just end up clawing your way out of a fucking bottomless pit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it can be pretty bad sometimes. I've had some stinkers. Not that often though. They either they either submit or leave, or are too scared to leave. And then in hindsight, they kind of assess themselves and go, "Okay, that that was just a, an act." Mm -hmm. We hope. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. You ever have a woman attack you on stage? No. Have you? I've had a woman attack me while I was inside of her. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes sense. That's. Um, yeah, no, I've had some, uh, lady tried to hit me in the head with a shoe, her shoe. She took her shoe off and took a dig at me. Wow. She like George Bush, but the bouncer grabbed her. Yeah, no, but it was a heel, a woman's high heel. Oh, yeah. She shit. was kind of tomahawk me in the mm -hmm. side of the throat. Oh my God. With a, with a fucking, some <laughs> cloven hooved shoe. Jesus. This is in Liverpool, England. So 
Oh, wow. Think of a, a, like an orange tanned, uh, snaggle tooth, like street pig. Mm. It wasn't good. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. Well, have you been getting out of uh, Texas at all uh, over the last year? Uh, no. For shows? No, for shows, no. I've just been all Texas. And I've been trying to get out of Austin. I, I like Austin. I'm trying to like do the road more and just hit up these other towns. Yeah, it's very incestuous here. you got yeah. probably 300 open micers that don't leave six square blocks mm-hmm. of comedy. So you're running and there's a lot of familiar faces. Yeah. There's the same... 80 people all the time. Oh, yeah. And then about another 300 kind of transient types that kind of show up. And then people that are the other slice of the pie would be people that are either visiting mm-hmm. or here for a short term. Yeah. Like Austin itself is like it's a city, but it's also a small town at the same time. Yeah. It's really weird. It's country. It's yeah. country that way. It has a country vibe to it, it's even true. though like because you, you look at you've probably seen. I don't know how many times you've seen someone riding a horse in the city and I'm not talking about those cops Mm -hmm. just people like trotting down the bike path in a horse oh yeah it's not a big deal I'm on the sidewalk going look at that (laughs) like some tourists right and they're like yeah I don't know I'm not used to seeing horses parked Mm -hmm. at a light next to a a car yeah it's weird yeah it's a weird country town but I want to go to like have you been to Houston yeah, I did that skank fest oh, in yeah. November. That's dope. Saw Saget. Oh, wow. Saget was there. Wow, how's he doing? He's dead. Oh, that's right. He's dead. I think someone killed Bob Saget. Probably. I hope not. Fucking wild. It's, um, yeah, that's terrible. He looked mm-hmm. fine, you know. It was, I heard it was like a bump on the head. Like he hit his head and then went to sleep, which you're not supposed to do if you have a concussion. It took you right out. I don't know. A friend of mine sent me an autopsy report that stated that he'd been bludgeoned now i don't know what is fact and fiction i wasn't in the autopsy mm-hmm. room but um i don't know maybe yeah. uh what would the reason be the full house money no i think he was on the epstein flight oh, list it? yeah but again, this is all tied to things that have been revealed on the internet, <laughs> and uh, we know how truthful that could be. Uh, sure, sure. Yeah. One of the rabbit Do you hole. go down those things? No, I used to. I think right out of high school, I was like a big, like early Alex Jones, like yeah. David Icke guy. I was like all into reptilians and shit. Yes? Yeah, yeah. Like I was like deep into it. Like I thought there was like a hollow earth. I was like, I My was buddy went to a six hour David Icke convention. No way. And um, I don't know if he was ever the same. Yeah. Yeah, no, I can get you. I was very close to just being full-blown, like, off the diving board. Why do you think that I think that the lizard aspect of it is kind of where I check out? Really? Why do, is that too much for me to even grasp that there's these shape-shifting reptiles? Because yeah. that's part of the David Icke mm-hmm. experience. <laughs> yeah. That all the leaders are just lizards from, like, a, another dimension. Mm. Well, it just becomes, like, all these weird accusations that just make no sense. Like, it's just, like, nothing's really grounded. That's when you leave it. Okay, say that is true. The reptilians? So we'll go with that as mm-hmm. a truth. Um, now, there's doors behind that. What's manipulating reptilian interdimensional creatures what is in motion there's clearly it can't be the end of the line i've seen the transformers movies Mm -hmm. (laughs) it just keeps going it keeps going you remember when the gods to the transformers showed up yeah he said who we made you Mm -hmm. and we're here to come to collect right is there a, a, a an entity that's bigger than lizard people living on earth maybe what if it's just humans again if there's not a different set of humans that control the reptilians that control us the humans mm. i don't fucking know or could we go into the realm of machines terminator maybe and now uh, a universe of um that this is a matrix thing where you've got a wire and you're mm. in a fish tank with Keanu Reeves and you're holding hands. <laughs> That'd be nice. Yeah, you know what? Who doesn't want to hold hands with Keanu Reeves? That sounds uh, great. That sounds amazing. <laughs> I want to live like that. That sounds John fun. John Wick? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was he Bill or Ted? I think he was... I think he was Ted. 
I think. You think? I think. I'm not sure. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan. I love him. Do you? Mm-hmm. Bill and Ted, actually. I love that movie when I was a kid. I still do. George Carlin's in it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's dope. No, he's uh, he was kicked out of acting school in Toronto. Carlin? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Ke- Keanu Reeves. Ah, oh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> he was, uh, uh, yeah, he was in acting school in Toronto. Mm-hmm. But he was asked to leave for whatever thing, but... Uh, well, yeah, he's like an actor. That he's like, everyone loves him, but he's not like a... He's, he's not a great actor, though. You know, Come on. He's not. I mean, like, name one great acting performance by him. Well, that's the thing, though. He's not... He's complimentary to the idea. Yeah. Why do you want to star... You... I don't know, like... You have to mesh with the with the the thing. A stand up is such a solitary thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Keanu Reeves has a he, it all works. He's part is a major ingredient to a, a bigger right. picture. Yeah, I feel like the roles complement him. Like yeah. Neo is like meant to be him. Yes, because that was almost Will Smith. Will Smith was almost in the Matrix. Oh, but then he did that other movie. He did uh, the Last Man on Earth. No, he did a Wild Wild West instead. Ooh. Yeah. Which spawned steampunk, I yeah, think. I brought it back. Yeah. <laughs> or brought it in, maybe. Yeah. That was a ridiculous fucking movie. Uh, let's talk more about Keanu Reeves. <laughs> yeah, he's great. Uh, the Lake House with Sandra Bullock. Ooh, is that a horror film? No, nah, no. Nah, it was like this weird like time travel movie. Okay. Where like Keanu Reeves had this lake house, and he put a letter into the mailbox, and Sandra Bullock got that letter like 10 years later. And they communicated through this like magical mailbox. Oh, yeah. I and, vaguely remember that. I mm-hmm. probably saw that in the theater. Yeah, it's weird. I watched it with my grandma when I was like eleven. Yeah, that's when you're crying and shit. Mm-hmm. It's like watching Ghost. I never seen it. You never seen Ghost? I know of it. It's like iconic. Whoopi Goldberg is mm-hmm. on a uh, uh, clay wheel yeah. thing, and she's communicating through her, her dead love, and right. It's just too much. It's a lot. Yeah. I don't want to be crying at the theater mm-hmm. you know I have friends of mine that can't even watch the movie Rudy they cry at Rudy yeah they cry their eyes out at Rudy these are grown men wow some of them were in the military and they watch Rudy and they cry wow really what movies have made you cry like Pixar movies really mm-hmm. animated yeah okay they get me more than like actual movies I think I only cried at cartoons it's very dramatic yeah I think it reminds me of uh, Latino uh, daytime soap operas, right? Cause I guess. Big action. Huge. Yeah, yeah. boobs and, and round things. There's always, <laughs> uh, like I do my laundry when I lived in Echo Park and the soaps would be playing in the laundry mat. Mm-hmm. And I was just, the physicality of it oh, was, yeah. was like, I, I think I'm following this because the actions are so dramatic. The mind, the phys- the clowning aspect of it. Uh, yet the girls were just out of control. Oh, hot. Gorgeous. Yeah. So hot. The hottest. And yeah. then I saw the weather girls. Oh, my God. And there, I couldn't, bl- I thought it was a joke. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a joke. It's too much. No, they're, that's that's cool though because they're just not like afraid to like acknowledge it. Like like Fox News always gets like really hot anchors, but they're trying. They're not. They don't ever really like, American hot. Yeah, it's always like, like blonde. a woman that's kind of broken. The <laughs> the way that they break her right. down, she has no femininity or voice of her own. Whoa. they yeah. don't want loudmouth white girls doing the right thing mm-hmm. in the media. No one wants to hear from those girls, but they're there. Right. There's some cool bitches. Yeah. They are. They're there. Like Rachel Maddow. Rachel Maddow? She's kind of hot, right? Is that the one that was on... Uh, no, I don't know any of this. This is uh, California-based news stations and stuff? No, it's like CNN or some shit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, occasionally there's ones... I don't think they last, though. Mm. You know, it used to be Mary Hart on Entertainment Tonight. I don't even know who that is. It was uh, E.T. News. I remember E.T., yeah. Yeah, she was like the OG, mm. and she was a hot corporate, woman, and her co-host was a very kind of Ken Doll guy, and that was about as like, nice. Even when she was re- describing a death in a, in, in a uh, celebrity news story, she just had a very kind of... Uh, likable warmthness to her but they would always bring the camera up through and you could see in her skirt and her balls 
<laughs> Whoa. She has everything. The She's got it all. She can change a tire and give you a blowjob. Ah, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> that's a real Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah, are you driving here? Yeah, I'm driving. I got a car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm mobile. Yeah. I I lived in L.A. forever, and um, I never, I've never driven a car in my life. You didn't? You, ever? Ever. I've in never had a license. Life. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Whoa, shit. I turned 50 in December. I've never driven a car. You've never had a car? Wow. Yeah. What is it? Is it like the fear of it, or you just don't like? There's a fear, uh -huh. and uh, I don't like. If I was in a controlled area, like I've met some people in the city that have race cars and shit mm -hmm. and do track racing oh, okay. and things, and um, in that kind of space, I would maybe go down that road. Uh, but I'll, I'm driving in L.A. I laugh when I moved to L.A. It sucked the first three years because Uber wasn't a thing yet. Yeah. But once that kicked in and I lived a walking distance from the store most of my time in, in California. So uh, a simple Uber ride, which is kind of like what I got going on here to get to downtown from here. It's oh, like it's taking bad. it from uh, uh, Sunset and La Brea to the comedy store. It's, mm -hmm. like, it's almost the same distance. Um Wow, that's one telling yeah dude yeah I, for like the first three months of me living here three or four months like i didn't have a car at all and i just use those scooters yeah like everywhere yeah and it, the weather's fine mm -hmm. you can walk for 30 40 minutes it's not horrible no no and it's I, actually a bit of an adventure because as you know from where you've grown up from neighborhood to neighborhood it's very different yeah i wouldn't say diverse of more of like oh this is cr crazy dangerous mm -hmm. and then there's some heritage houses on the yeah. next some old old uh, architecture mm -hmm. there's plenty of that um in this town oh yeah there's a lot of it capital building oh yeah I, yeah. I finally went in there have you been in there i don't look at when i look those guys up front have machine guns yeah you've seen them right mm -hmm. i've seen them strapped yeah they're strapped up up front i'm mm -hmm. just like this is very hostile time in in global politics and uh that's why i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get a gun you're gonna get one yeah for sure wow. come on yeah that makes sense you know you're from orange county you're not immune to helicopters and gunfire oh you know it was all around and no helicopters here didn't you notice that there isn't there's no helicopters i did not notice that until right now it really makes you feel a little confident about your quality of life when there's not a lot of helicopters i guess so hmm I don't know. I feel like I'm always in like the bad parts of town, like Sixth Street. Like I'm always there <laughs> for comedy. All the comedy's there. I hate that. you. Look like a victim. <laughs> it's <Same>. on Sixth Street. <laughs> I look like the one who got shot <laughs> yeah. sixteen times. Yeah, but by accident. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're a wrong place, wrong time guy. That's probably how I'm gonna go out, most likely. Yeah. <laughs> it's me. Someone else's fault. It's totally. Mm -hmm. You never. That's what's going to be the sad part, is it's going to be someone's fault. Yeah. And you had a, a, a chance to zig when you should have zagged, but you were doing something nice for somebody, yeah. and you got killed because of it. Mm-hmm. Damn. Sorry. Probably. No, you're probably right. Oh, God. I don't know. <laughs> now I'm scared. <laughs> yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you know that there's a lot of shootings down there. Oh, yeah. So much. Like, how many a month? I don't know. Somebody Google that. How many shootings in Austin on 6th like Street? On 6th Street, since I've been here since June, there's been at least, like, at least five. Yeah, I, I would of. say probably realistically, probably closer to 12. Probably. I think there's probably one a month. Well, there's some that are, like, you know, where they, the cops come in and someone definitely got shot. And yeah. But who knows the more that don't get reported or anything yeah. like that. Or just someone just shooting. Yeah. No one gets caught for it. I don't I was I don't having a cigarette trying to avoid the crowd in front of the Vulcan for Kill Tony. Mm -hmm. And my friend goes, you're standing in blood. And I look, and there's dry blood. It, some of it was still a little wet, but the, there was a hole in the wall behind me. Somebody did a drive-by on that corner. Oh, shit. There was a family that one of their members had uh, been murdered in the um, alleyway behind the club, and they had a cup with a dead persons i never really seen that before mm, a cup a cup with the picture of their dead father oh my god on it asking people for money for the funeral oh wow that's heartbreaking <laughs> yeah what if they're lying that's the thing too but there was a lot of them they had a look for, as far as a group look there was the the, the woman with the cup and a, a gentleman and like some children mm. they had a I'll pay them off the back of the effort. Right. You know what I mean? If you're just out trying to 
fuck people over as right. a solo performer. Mm-hmm. You need some backup dancers to fill up gotcha. the story. You know? a whole unit. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Damn, it's a bummer. That's, an, it, that's a painful conversation to have to your children at the table. That's not really what a parent should have to have, mm-hmm. uh, that we need to go and um, solicit our dead friend's uh, funeral to get money to make it happen. That's a bummer. <laughs> rough. <laughs> so rough. Oh, God. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's a crazy town. You know, did you see anybody ever shot? No, never. No? Mm-mm. No, I'm not, they're not in front of me, no. Well, you say, when you know, you hear Long Beach. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always thought of Snoop Dogg, but it, there's some... Like, when I went to the Laugh Factory of Long Beach, I'm mm-hmm. like, what? This is nice. Yeah. This is nice. Oh, it's that, a Ferris wheel. You can't, yeah, it's downtown Long Beach. Long Beach is a big city. <laughs> yeah, it's I didn't one, know. It's one of the bigger cities in L.A. In is there LA any County. bad part of the beach? The beach? Is there a bad... No, you can walk, no. you can walk around there fine, but there was like a bunch of like you know, homeless people, and I remember um, I was doing community service because like I think I was like loitering somewhere, and I had to like wake up early. How and, many like, hours did they give you? I forget. It was a long time ago, like thirty or something like that. Thirty hours. Thirty hours. We're what just a loitering. Loitering. Yeah. Was, Come on. It was bullshit. It was complete bullshit. But I did it with my buddy, and we had to like get up at six a.m. and like we hung out with this guy. We had to like work with this dude who like cleaned the beach and like went to every bathroom on the beach <sighs> and just like they barely clean it don't wash your hands at, at a long beach bathroom it's it's disgusting because like they just get the same brush wash your like rinse it around oh, the yeah, toilet yeah, 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 yeah. and then take it to the sink yeah, yeah it's yeah. all it's all the same br- it's disgusting yeah. but i remember seeing this guy <laughs> there's like a steep sand hill from like the, the street onto the beach and this guy with like a plastic bag just like you don't walk down those you don't walk down it at all but he just like I see him like kind of running down it and then walking to the bathroom and the guy we're working with this like older dude he came out he was like oh that guy's just shooting up heroin right now yeah and we're just like oh fuck yeah needles laying around in the bathroom mm-hmm. yeah there's um especially with the type of people that you're getting uh I just here I was going around Lady Bird Lake here in one of the porta potties, there was a belt and syringes oh, in there when someone had blasted shit mm-hmm. all over the back of the toilet. Oh my god! It looked like someone had started a dirt bike up in the <laughs> washroom. It was crazy. Yeah, that's fucking. And he cool. left his belt behind. He probably didn't need it. No, no. Well, when you get so skinny and you're in the last hole in mm-hmm. your belt, then there's going to be some problems. Yeah, that's going to work. Um, god. What do you got coming up? What am I doing? Um, I'm doing some uh, show on the east side for like South by. Oh, great. You know Hotel Vegas? You ever been there? Mm-mm. It's a cool little like... Uh, is it over by uh, Lucky Duck? It is, like down the street from Lucky Duck. Yeah, 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 yeah. And just by... What's just it by, like inside? It's a tiny little rock club. It's a tiny cool. little rock bar. Stage? Yeah, a little, little stage, real tight, okay. packed. And I... Um, uh, you been to Latchkeys for the karaoke night? Uh... I think I've been there ages ago, right. but I know... Uh, well, you know, they do the big karaoke night. A lot of the comics go sure. there. Sure. And I popped in for a second. There's like so many people. I was like, I can't fucking... I can't hang with this right now. So, no. And I was like, I'm going to go get a burrito. And I started walking down the street, and I hear this music coming out of Hotel Vegas. And I'm like, that sounds cool. And I walk in. It's like a six-buck cover charge or whatever. Sure. And it's like a New Orleans like brass band. Yeah. And I was like, it was great. It was a fucking tiny. A bunch of people packed in there. I had a fucking great time. Yeah. Some good fucking music in there. That's it, happened to me. Go, I, I think it was a blues club next to the cellar. I came out of the cellar, and uh, I heard. I'm like, this, this can't be live. And I think I go, is this live? He goes, yeah, yeah. This guy is so and so. He's regular here. Blah blah blah. I went in. I ordered a, a, a uh, like a, a, cl- a cocktail, mm-hmm. and sat and watched this fucking blues guitar player shred yeah. for like and there's like six other people in the room like this is amazing wow. it just it was mind blowing dude that's the best just walking down a yeah. street and then just hearing and then just suddenly you're watching a great show yeah some great fucking music and it's not crowded and you're getting a little uh, that's why I 
Prince used to do that after his shows. He really? go to small, unannounced gigs in bo- local bars after his stadium gigs. Wow. He would show up at these various places. I think I was at some place in Montreal, and someone had pointed out, yeah, there's a plaque here saying Prince performed here. Blah, blah, blah. Wow. This is before cell phones mm-hmm. to the degree. You can just get away with that stuff. Yeah, you could have Prince show up at your cl- nightclub after hours and have him play with a full band. Wow, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Man, he loved music. Yeah. After doing like a real stadium gig and then just go do that, that's amazing. Yeah. It's, yeah. Chappelle's kind of like that. Right. You know, you'll see him in a uh, uh, some sort of folk festival in mm-hmm. Nebraska and then... You know, doing a fifteen thousand plus stadium gig, right. all in the same week. God, that's what I regret not going to the store enough because, like, I never got to see him like just like pop into the belly room, yeah, and just work stuff out. I would have loved to see that. I guess he's been getting up at the laugh or um, uh, the improv. I saw some posts that oh, he's been popping in there, but that's awesome. he'll show up. Not to mention when Joe's clubs finally doors open, true. Dave will be popping in regularly oh. in, in various comics that you thought were kind of faded in obscurity. Mm-hmm. I have a sneaking suspicion the um, the glow of what's going on here will eventually reach comedians that really loved and for the first time in many years are going to have an opportunity to safely uh, in a perfect storm environment to perform comedy again. Mm -hmm. People like Roseanne. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, my God. I didn't even think of that. How about Eddie Murphy? How does that sit with you? That's amazing. That would be cool. I didn't even think of people like that. That's... Ah. That's so exciting. That's the cool thing about this town, too, and this scene, is that, like, nothing's really founded yet. We're still in this, like, puberty age. Like, we don't really know what's going to happen. Total puberty age. Yeah, and then Rogan's Club will be, like, all right, now it's founded. Because we still got Cap and then Rogan, and now we like bookend it. <laughs> yeah. And then now it's like, okay, now we got the scene. The full circle. Mm-hmm. The circle is complete. Yeah. And there's various rings to it, like Saturn. Oh, yeah. Of like everything from the, the craft to all the... Was that the door? I don't know. I think like some, something fell. It probably... There's a human head in the in the fridge. Oh, that's what it was. Classic. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm gonna secure that. What you do if someone had just mm-hmm. pulled this curtain aside and lunged onto the table with a machete? I mean, they got Jason Rouse. You've never classic. Did, you've never did classic Rouse. <laughs> that's oh, what I heard. Oh, Mr. Heart Attacks. Right. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people told me in hindsight they were like, "Fuck, what the, what am I gonna expect? I've seen this show. Mm-hmm. What's the what's what's his the studio gonna look like? And uh, there's no dead animals or um, handcuffed." prostitutes or runaways no yeah i'm a little let down honestly well like, let's bring up the heroin everybody <laughs> let's go <laughs> um i don't know man like yeah i do uh, i'm looking forward to um seeing things come around in full circle yeah the growth of this place yeah because then i can leave because now i know what the the board looks like mm-hmm and uh, you can't survive it. You're doing yourself a disservice by staying in one city doing comedy in hopes to go through various gates. You've got you yeah. to switch it up, coast to coast, everything in between. What's your next move? What do you think? From here? Mm-hmm. I really don't see me leaving here. See, it's a hard question to answer at this point. Mm-hmm. You know, contractually... I'm here for another year. Um, I have a sneaking suspicion that there's at least a couple more years following that. If certain things aren't met to my approval, then I will um, resort back to uh, whatever LA or New York has been. I don't know. I would say I have to stay in the US for six months now where I want to spend that time will have to be the most fruitful. Right. Yeah. I'm not interested in like settling down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Comedy is where the stage is and fortunately you're living it. This is where it's happening. 
Right. There's comedy here. There's 50, 60, 70 open mics a month. Yeah. There's there going to be like four or five comedy clubs. Yeah. So you got Cap City, Vulcan, Creek in the Cave, that Sunset Strip. Sunset Strip. And then... Um, Velveeta. Ro- Velveeta and... Joe's play. What is that? Six. Yeah, like six clubs. Six clubs in one city that are doing comedy mm-hmm. three to seven nights a week. Yeah, it's amazing. That's a lot of tickets mm-hmm. to be sold in one city yeah. as stand-up comedian. I don't think there's anywhere in the globe. Things are changing now economically with these regulations are falling by the wayside and mm-hmm. stuff. Canada, congratulations. You've, uh, you've, uh, uh, they've dropped mandates and stuff. Oh, really? um, my friend says at least half of the people are still wearing masks. You were kind of, I was actually doing shows at strip clubs in Orange County. Oh. Uh, I think at TJ Showgirls. Okay. Do you know that place? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and um, a couple other um, friends of mine work as DJs at strip clubs and also comedians. And uh, we'd done some shows. Well, Hollywood was like a ghost town. I was at a packed strip club with a bunch of cholos, strippers doing comedy. Mm-hmm. In a, there was a lineup out the door. There's a video on my Instagram. Yeah. But um, yeah, Orange County didn't care at all. No, I think the local sheriff, kind of in response to the governor, Mm -hmm. was saying, like, we ain't playing that way up here in Orange. Oh, yeah, no, they don't don't give a damn. No. They do their own thing. Yeah. Orange has a little Austin. A little bit. A little Austin. It's definitely, it's more conservative. Yeah. Most of Orange County, like, very conservative. Yeah. Yeah, they don't, they don't give a shit. They do their own thing. There's Austin-type neighborhoods within Orange County. Mm Mm-hmm. It's very, yeah, similar to Texas. They kind of want to stand on their own. and A lot of skateboarders moved there in the 90s. Oh, yeah. Yeah, has a big, probably still, right? Oh, yeah. Is there it, a big skate park? In Orange County, I think so, but it's all of L.A., honestly. All yeah. of Southern California is just skateboarding, and yeah. like it's it's big everywhere, I feel like. Yeah, there's so many great, you know, I wish my, my body had been... You know, in my 20s, skateboarding BMX was such a big part. I still ride BMX. Skateboarding. Yeah. Sketchy. It, it's, uh, I've got enough, I have eight screws and plates in my arm from a hyperextension Jeez. on a skateboard, but. Gnarly. The BMX falls are fine uh-huh. to a degree of, I've gone over the handlebars enough time to yeah. uh, knock on wood to save myself for the most part. But, um, uh, Orange County was, uh. A lot of my friends that had picked up sponsorships and deals out of Canada had all moved to Orange County. Mm-hmm. So that city must have been all those ditches, you know, all these banks, handrails, stairs. That you would all like Orange County mm-hmm. or, and all the videos and stuff. Oh, yeah. There's plenty of them. Mm. Huntington Beach, too. Yeah. Big skateboard town. BMX is all over. I feel like Orange County is very much known for more for BMX. Oh, really? Yeah, I think I associate that with more in my head. Okay. And skateboarding's more of, like, L.A. Yeah. But it's, like, everywhere. Yeah, It's, like, yeah, the yeah. whole culture. It's global now. Ever since, like, the, was it the Z-Boys? Yeah. Tony Alva and them, mm-hmm. they, like, popularized it. Ever since then, like, Southern California is, like, it's huge. Yeah. I had one of those guys, one of the Alva team, my Canadian friend, he, um, he came out to the show. I always encouraged him. I go, listen, you got pros in town that want to do something because he's going to watch these guys while they're on tour he's a team manager and uh, I go bring them to the comedy show he goes yeah it's great you know I can occupy them for a few hours and it breaks up their day they get to do something a little touristy Mm -hmm. being having all your energy sucked up about one subject all day you're around skateboarders all day you know you want to be check out and a laughter has always been cool so he brought um, Dave Duncan, who was on the original Alva team from when I idolized oh, that uh, whole thing. That was cool. I didn't recognize him at first, but mm-hmm. 30 years had passed since the magazine pictures. At least. At least. But did you do any of that? What was it? Were you playing hockey in uh, high school? I, I, I had <laughs> friends with skateboard. I was friends with skateboarders. Yeah. And like I was just too much of like a little bitch to like try tricks. So mm. I just like roll around with them. Sure. I would have like, I had like a little short board with like, like a sector nine yeah. and just cruise around. And it was, I loved it. It That's was so fine. much fun. Yeah. There's a whole, now there's so many different tiers. Once the longboarding thing started to be trend in various old school, mm-hmm. uh, new school, what have you. But what was your, 
did you have that passion were you involved in sports and stuff no no i didn't i was like a hesitant kid and i just didn't like try and stuff i played soccer for two years like my mom made me yeah and i didn't like it wasn't that good at it that's why you're a comedian you weren't a team player no not at all (laughs) and i was like i don't know i was like afraid of failure too i never liked trying things and humiliation yeah i wasn't big into it now you can't get enough of it yeah now i'm used to it like (laughs) it's weird it kind of makes no sense like open mics i was like i can do that i'll face that like it's worth a laugh yeah because there's you're in control of your pain mm-hmm. in that process. Right. There's no one, you know, you're dealing with a live situation, but you can, um, uh, it's not like being bullied or uh, people are kind of rooting for you to do well. Mm-hmm. It's a comedy performance. Yeah. But at the same time, the pain is real. Mm-hmm. But it's at least a, a, a there's a process. It's for a bigger picture. Yes. You have to take those licks. There's no way around it. Oh, You're going to have not. the brutal shows. Yeah, I think that's the only thing that keeps you going is knowing it's like, okay, you can look at the bomb and then analyze it and make it better. Totally. Yeah. Fortunately for uh, cell phones and stuff, there's plenty of copies of people's outbursts in bad performances on uh, the yeah. internet. Mm-hmm. It must suck, though, to have your entire set put online. Oh, yeah. I've had problems with people trying to record shit. Mm -hmm. It's a real, real pain in the ass. People do it everywhere, even at bar shows. Like, I'll see people, like, hold up, like, like, they do an Instagram story of me, and I'm just like, "Ah, whatever. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't care. Yeah. I'm I'm pretty in the middle. My comedy isn't edgy at all, and it's, like, fine. Yeah, but something, you dealing with a heckler, heckler, Mm -hmm. one line, out of context. Right. Now you're that guy. Could be, Yeah. And you, <laughs> yeah. Oh, right Have up. you had any like you know you you said middle of the road, but it's mm-hmm. not it's just not uh you're not screaming at people. No, I've never had like a crazy outburst. Yeah, I've been like rude with people, maybe gone too far, but I've never like Some yelled at someone. Slob, drunk in the front. Yeah. Shut up, you pig. Mm-hmm. Especially in Orange County, is always like these drunk like middle aged white women couples. Yeah. Yeah, and they turn on you as a team. Ugh. We don't like you. God. You're ruining our night. Mm-hmm. Shut up, fatso. God. Is what I say. Oh, that's what you say. Yeah. <laughs> because they're the ones ruining it. They are. Yeah. It's they're trying wrong. to uh, poison the uh, the soup. I don't know. Well. It's terrible. This should be an interesting um, summer we got coming up. I'm excited Everything for should be wide open mm-hmm. and ready to rock and roll for the fall. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be, uh, I just booked like 10 shows in Denmark. Ooh. Last two weeks of October, I'll be performing in uh, various cities in Denmark. And then now uh, we should hear about um, Norway and Sweden maybe de- following that. But we'll see. We'll see. I got to, I got to, I got to get out of Austin. I feel you. I got to get out of Austin. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, I have the excuse at this point, my passport just expired a couple of weeks ago. Oh, uh, okay. So um, I've got enough time to uh, renew that, which is going to be weird to uh, have a passport stamp mm-hmm. uh, for the first time in four years, five years. Oh, really? Yeah. I haven't been back to Canada in, in some time, but oh, um, wow. I will go there now that everything seems to be open mm-hmm. have you ever been to canada mm-hmm. have you been out of the u.s i've been in mexico i've been i did show in mexico oh city. really yeah how was it it was great that's awesome one of them was uh, not it was poorly attended mm-hmm. it was at a, a university venue okay uh but the uh the beer hall in mexico city which was uh they do a monthly english night oh okay i think it's the oldest comedy venue in Mexico City. That's cool. Yeah, That's it was amazing. pretty cool. I had a call. Jesus Treo mm-hmm. calls me and goes, why is your picture in a comedy club in Mexico City? <laughs> and I go, That's crazy. They put it up. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I, the whole time I was there, I was really, um, I thought, wow, I could... I could live here for a month or two out of the year. Really? I'd ask people what they're paying their rent, but the pollution, man, was outrageous. Mm, that's what I've heard. It's brutal. It was so bad. I was like, everything here is fucking awesome, except the pollution was outrageous. It was like a Marlboro factory. 
on fire constantly. Jesus. Just gray. I'd be picking black stuff out of my nose. No way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Just it, from just walking around? Yeah, yeah. No, Holy but shit. honestly, you could... It's in... It's like this. You just do this. And there's like black shovels of of dirt. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, it was a total bummer. The taxi we were in had a hole in the floor. You could see the ground as we were no. going through. But uh, the the shows were the people were cool. And it was right after when all those kids had got their heads cut off and dumped in a duffel bag downtown. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? I remember hearing a lot of stories like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is. I think it just popped up on my Facebook history seven years ago. Um, I was, I did the show and, um, there was, uh, and I ended up meeting one of the guys cause they, some teachers and students had gone in protest while the police arrested them and handed them over to the cartel and the cartels killed, uh, all of them, all the students. And, um, there was all these pictures of the killed students all over the fences and stuff all over the city in a military presence. I didn't know what had happened. I kind of showed up at a really bad time in Mexico City. And uh, people were in mourning, and the, and the police uh, were um, out with military presence all over the city. Um, but I did enjoy the fact that they'll, they'll take any two American things and push them together and make their own shit. Like, I've seen Spider-Man with a Superman cape. <laughs> and, yeah. But some cool shit, though, like... One guy had done some sort of Frankenstein and Batman thing, and his whole costume was was pretty wild. But you could see that he'd taken all the logos and, and color schemes. And didn't. I had the street tacos that were... Um, I'd never seen... There's no health... Uh, <laughs> inspection. Yeah, no, of course not. It was pretty crazy to see someone chop m- me on a tree stump on a sidewalk. Oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Was it good? <laughs> it was good. It was okay. good. But I was looking around. There was flies everywhere. Mm-hmm. It was uh, uh, just a, a, not a pass on a uh, North American health codes. Oh, no. No. Of course not. No, I had concerns. I did get diarrhea immediately. Really? Yeah, as soon as my feet touched the ground. It happened right away? It went, I went, got soup ass immediately. <laughs> and I was like, whatever, I can stay hydrated. But uh, I did want to stay there for a couple months, but the pollution was too much. Beautiful place. Beautiful place. Walked around. There's so much architecture, the history there. The food was great. I want to go. I've only yeah. been to um, Puerto Vallarta. My little, like, friend just hung himself there. Oh, right. Really, really? Yeah, in November. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. It's yeah. a place to do it. It's a beautiful city. Is it? Yeah. It's okay. amazing. Yeah. It's like a lot of Spanish architecture, too, and like Italian, I think. The history is wild, but they have a lot of like these. How long were you there for? Like just one day. I went on a okay. cruise with my family, a fucking carnival cruise, sure. and we stopped there. And um, I was like super hungover. I partied hard the, the night before. <laughs> and um, I just walked around the city, and it was fucking, it was gorgeous. And they have these like uh, statues for the, from this like surrealist artist, uh-huh. not Dolly, but one one of them, right? Mm. And they're just like weird, trippy statues. Of people with, like triangle heads, just right on the beach, like totally out of nowhere. And it's, it's like great. Silent Hill, kinda. Like that is scary, just okay. odd, <laughs> yeah, just very weird. And it was um, it was beautiful. It yeah. was a fucking beautiful city. Food. Food was great. Um, actually, no, I, I didn't even get to eat because I was so hungover. Okay. I remember I I started feeling better when I was walking around the city, and I went to one of the like the convenience stores, and I got a big bag of Cheetos puffs. Yeah. Because they were like different, it was, like a different looking bag, yeah, and yeah. like the Cheetos were di- they're smaller, mm-hmm. and you get like a whole shit load of them for like fifty cents or whatever, and I threw it up. Like an yeah. hour later, I threw it all up. That uh, alcohol poisoning in Cheetos, uh, not really good. No, I don't know what I was thinking. No, really you're, it's like eating crayons. Yeah, it yeah. tasted great. Going down, it was great. I made some bad late night food decisions that I paid for during the day. There's nothing worse than being on the road having food poisoning <sighs> because of some foolish food that you've bought last minute mm-hmm. that you knew in your heart yeah it was a bad idea it was gas station sandwiches mm. like a tuna like a tuna melt from a yeah, gas station seafood or shrimp at a ga- or sorry uh sushi oh yeah gas station sushi bad idea terrible horrible. idea horrible yeah there's nothing worse than being sick on a flight 
Oh. It's the worst, especially when you're flying like six, seven hours oh. and you just got your head on the back of the seat mm -hmm. and you're sweating down there. Damn. And the lady next to you is farting while she's sleeping. Jesus. And you end up getting her number. Yeah. <laughs> starting a family with her. Yeah, I like the way you smell. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what it is about the way you throw your voice, but I find <laughs> it very attractive. Oh, fuck. When do you plan on going back for your f first visit back to California? Uh, I already visited for the holidays. Did you drive? Uh, no, nah, I flew. Did oh. you drive here? No, nah, I flew here. Oh, and then you got a car I here? I got a car here, yeah. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah, and... Um, that wasn't even a thought? I thought it's only 22 hours. Yeah, I just figured because I remember when I came visited, I was like, I don't need a car. It's fine, I can get around. And then yeah. living here, I was like, I need a fucking car. Yeah, because like I think I did a show in Round Rock, and I had to take an Uber. It was like a thirty dollar Uber, and then and I was like, I ah. fall. They tried to get me to fall for one of those too, and they're like, You want to come do my show? And it's twenty minutes out of town, mm -hmm. and I don't drive. There's no way. Yeah, there's no way. I was doing the thing of like, who else is on the flyer? Do I know yeah. them? I'll hit them up and then get a ride. Yeah, I'll tell them. I'll go, book me with somebody with wheels because I am not mm -hmm. navigating that trip for beer tickets. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I think there's I'm, some nice gigs outside the city, I think. There is. And, um, yeah, especially like the other cities, like San Antonio. I love San Antonio. Mm -hmm. uh, you ever done Blind Tiger? You're like the third person to bring that up. I love it. I love that room. Is it good? It's great. It's a tiny. But they don't pay. They pay. Do they pay? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. They pay. Maybe they just won't pay me. Yeah, no we'll one likes you. I'm going to mad. No one likes me. <laughs> Damn it, you heard it first. No one. Ha There's some people. Some. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got to do Blind Tiger. It's amazing. I yeah. love it. Um, I've never been to New York. I haven't done New York comedy. Was but it like 60 people? I think so. I think that's like the max they yeah. could possibly fit. And that's, that's why like, it's good. That's why then it's pushing it. It's tiny. It's as big as this room right yeah. now it's it's so tiny i love it i it's, love doing tight rooms people are on top of me yeah well because you want people to pay attention to you mm -hmm. where i demand it yeah right i yeah. think that's that's that, that's the big difference yeah you're like yeah i don't you and it's completely different animals but mm -hmm. you're like i've actually worked on this <laughs> I'm gonna try my best, yeah. And I'd like to really expect you to be the best audience you could be, mm -hmm. which is, which is, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. And when they don't subscribe to that, you know what you're in the back, and you're like, the guy on before he's talking to the audience way too much. He's riling up all the drunks. Now they're all combative, uh, and right. they think it's gonna be, oh, this is all the comedies tonight. Mm -hmm. And then you get on, and you've got six shitheads. Barking, slurring out nonsense, and you're just like, I worked on this. Yeah. I worked. I really, mm -hmm. I had to take a $30 Uber here. Right. And now you guys are just screaming. Yeah, and that's when I start doing things. Like, I just start, I, like, I over try. Like, I start making them try to like me too much. Yeah. And I'm just, like, smiling all fake and shit. And I pandering. Just, like, yeah, huge pandering. I, <laughs> I've done that so many times. You sell out. I know. I'm sorry. I don't do it in, like, obvious ways, but I do it and just, like, I can tell when I look back to myself. I'm like, ah, I should have yeah. just up and, like... So you're trying to salvage. Yeah. And that's nice. Mm -hmm. That's a nice person personality I, trait. I'm trying to get away from it. Because, like, like, the yeah. smaller rooms, like Blind Tiger... Because you know in your heart you're a bit of a vet Venomous asshole. Yeah, you a bit. you do, you know, you're a schemer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> right. Slightly, slightly. Yeah, you're a schemer. Uh -huh. You're a long game. Mm -hmm. That's why you came to Austin. You know that Orange County's not going anywhere. Oh yeah. But you can come here, and you observe all the fuck ups, and they will wait for your opportunity to just fill that position, and then fingers up <laughs> you guys can go fuck yourselves i'm out right yeah kind of ah, yeah a little bit, a little I bit. yeah you're, you're good kinda right good mm -hmm. good but you at least you you live by some codes you're not a total shyster no i can't no you can't be no no but you're patient yes i can see the way you're picking the end of your fingers mm -hmm. that you're you're actually scheming right now you're like bit. this guy busted me kind of <laughs> I, I see through you you know what i mean yeah, but that's good though because being an anxious maniac is you know from your experiences in California that that's not going to help anything. Mm -mm. Most of it is keep your mouth shut and get to it. 
Yeah. And that's really it. All the other stuff is just... It's my ride. Oh, uh, they're coming for me. Classic. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great one from the stage. Mm-hmm. I've, I've had comedy gold a couple times where you've heard sirens. <laughs> and there they go. <laughs> you, the worst part is, is no one can hear it on mic. Is what I found I was, out. I, I figured yeah. that. I figured that. I was like, so I can't hear it's it. It's just us kind of just staring into the sky like two lunatics. <laughs> uh, favorite movies. Favorite movies. Yeah. We were talking about, Mar- you like the absurd. I like absurd. I kind of like, I, when I was younger, for sure, like more, like a Jim Carrey was my guy. Yeah. hundred percent. Like Me, I, same. Yeah. Like, I loved him. I worshiped him as a kid. He yeah. was like one of my first like comedic actors, like I was obsessed with. And then now I think I'm more into like grounded comedy. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of similar to like my comedy on stage. I feel like like you ever seen rooted in truth, rooted in truth, like yeah. reflecting some kind of like authenticity yeah. of life. Like um, I love Louis, his yeah. show. It was amazing. I love that. But like movies, I probably like, Swingers. You ever seen Swingers? Of course, it's Loved fun. It. I can watch that any day, like all day. I can. I, I had I met John Favreau. Nice. Uh, yeah, which was weird because I was just like I knew him for Swingers, but Iron Man. Right. And now uh, Mandalorian is fucking yeah. so good. It's great. It's better than most of the Star Wars. It's probably the films. the best thing to come out of Star Wars. Yeah. Especially. It's pretty consistent. Yeah. So good. The toys. Yeah, they but, must have some full... I'm not nerdish enough mm-hmm. to know this, but I would love a, a, a Mandalorian statue. It would look cool in the house. It's a cool. He's a cool looking character. Yeah, that armor. One of my one of my earliest. I was you know I was a child when the first Star Wars movie had come out, so that was right in my youth. Mm-hmm. And one of my first action figures, first one was C three PO. Nice. Uh, and I hadn't even seen the movie yet, but um, the um, Boba Fett thing. I think I found him. They were pulling up. Ashfold on our back driveway and they, I found a Boba Fett action figure oh, that's tight. under it and I couldn't understand why the missile wouldn't shoot out of his back uh-huh. because it looked like uh, you could move it but I think I snapped it with a pair of pliers uh-huh. and then they ended up reintroducing a character that actually shot the thing out and then kids got hit in the eye and they'd stop that. Oh, did they really? Yeah. Oh, bummer. There was a lot of toys that had plastic parts. Uh-huh. The Voltron stuff, all these... Uh, G.I. Joe and uh, whatnot, but once they started taking the springs out of toys because kids were take it, shooting them at their siblings. Right. I made a crossbow and it was taken away from me for shooting. You it. made a crossbow? I made a crossbow. Like, out of like wood and stuff? Like no. You- like, you want me to explain? Well, uh, where I grew up, there was uh, a lot of industry around. Mm-hmm. So a lot of these parking lots would have everything from lumber to cable and, and uh, various uh, supplies for things that they were working on in these local factories. Well, we found that there was a, a whole stack of this gray plastic tubing that was used to uh, p- put... Um, uh, electrical feeds through underground and they would screw all this plastic tubing together well the tubings were only millimeters apart so they would slide in and out of each other and they were all in various sizes and they were like 30 feet long so we cut them to size with a hacksaw and um, drew up a design and heated the the thin one to in an oven and kinked it and made a wow. bow and then the long tube we cut it down it was about this big around and put another piece inside drilled a hole through the front ran the bow through the front and then put another piece in the back and a curved another melted bow piece oh, shit. but as an armrest mm-hmm. and then cut out a hole here put a handle in it curve that put grooves in it and a cut for uh the hockey lace that we'd run through the bow the bow mm-hmm. had and then we dowel. We didn't have proper arrows, so we'd get the smallest dowel that we could that wouldn't warp and pencil sharpen it. And you would flick the thumb up on it to move the shoelace out of the groove that would sit in the back. And it would shoot far. No way. It worked well. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was. they were like, because we were fucking 
we had crossbows. These things really worked. They'd stick in doors, call. We vandalized the whole city. They were finding arrows and all kinds of shit. And they go, you guys got to get rid of this stuff. There's like six of us going around with homemade crossbows, just shooting at light bulbs, house rooftops. There'd be arrows in the neighborhood. It was, Jesus. it was, yeah, we were terrorists. It was great. That's awesome. Yeah, we'd take old um, hockey equipment because none of us were in the organized sports, but we had early you know 80s 70s and 80s anime was our morning television so a lot of the anime stuff would use um they would use like mad max type stuff like you'd see a shin pad for a hawk uh, mm -hmm. a, a character or he'd have football uh, equipment and it was spikes or whatever it may be so we'd take all this hockey equipment sand it all down and paint it with our own logos and stuff on it and make these characters with crossbows. Whoa. This is before I got into drugs. We yeah. Had a, I had vivid head of You are a good boy just I doing was cosplay. A fantasy. Yeah, it was, but it was not geared around anything. It was just a Frankenstein of all the influences we had and things that we made. And then sheet metal, we'd cut in and make all these burglary tools and whatnot. We were literally, when the sun went down in my neighborhood, the doors would be locked. Do you remember, uh, what was that movie, the vampire movie in Alaska? Oh, I, I heard of it. I don't think I've seen it. Like 30 Days of Night. Yes, or that. yeah. yes. That's what it was like in my neighborhood. All the, Yeah, we would go out and just terrorize. The city would wake up and it would just be a mess. What the fuck? Yeah, that's why I left in the 90s. <laughs> I lasted to 90, uh, 93 I left. Oh, that's so bad. 20, 21 years, I guess. Fuck. About 22. Damn. Something. But uh, here in Austin, you're not going anywhere. No. You're going to stay like a bunch of us. Um, here for a while. I think there's a handful of people. As you can see, just the eight months, nine months that you've been here, mm -hmm. uh, there's people literally getting off buses every day oh, to yeah. do comedy here. So many. It's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So many yeah. people visiting too. Those, yeah. Those are great. And That's guys wild. that have visited a couple times and then they're all of a sudden they're living here. Mm hmm. They made that choice. Oh, yeah. I've this is, that. we're seeing it's a whole new world out there, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. uh, but Austin, Texas seems to be the spot that I can see for any uh, comedy, you know, just those, so the, like the Kill Tony shows and mm -hmm. shows at the, all the Creek in the Cave. I've, you know, Adam Lucky's filthy shows. Oh, like, great Pat. show. That's yeah, a great show. Yeah. You, well, did you, yeah. I've done it. I've done it once. Yeah. Amazing. Probably the one of the best shows in town, if yeah. not the best show. Yeah. It's fantastic. So good. And there's numerous places all over the city. Mm -hmm. uh, there'll be tour coming up for me starting August 1st till September across Canada. And then uh, October, Denmark. And then we'll see about Sweden, Finland, Norway, and Iceland, maybe. I'd like to go to Iceland. But I will go to Iceland's Fringe Festival next year in July. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do my, my life story leading up to my performance, uh, first stand-up performance. So it's like the first 25 of my 50 years of experience wow. um, in a, a long-form one-hour show wow. about my life and how terrible it is. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds beautiful. <laughs> it's going to be great. It's going to be interesting. So... Um, Stuff like that. I've got another film we're going to shoot here, uh, I think, next month. I got Jared a small part in this horror film I'm Dope. doing. Dope. So um, yeah, I'm sick. looking forward to that. And um, check my uh, social media for all upcoming shows. Where can people find you? Uh, Instagram, Jason underscore Smation, S-M-A-Y-T-I-O-N. Yeah. Follow me, TikTok. All that's all the same username. Yeah. Be a part of my scheme. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's long... My long game. Long game. I'm yeah. Wow. What is the long game? Like, do you just want to be, like... I want to be what? a headliner. You want to be a headliner yeah. touring comic? Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, that's all how I many, want. How many work... How many weekends out of a year? I have no idea. All of them, if they were work? That would be cool. That'd be great. If you were booked for a year solid, Thursday, Friday, two shows Saturday, for a year straight, I would, would that, that be great? That would be great. I you, love that. And you make like 125 grand that, yeah. just from ticket sales. That sounds amazing. That year. Yeah. That's that's before taxes. Yeah, that sounds that's good. still fine, right? Yeah, that still sounds like a lot. Like, I'm not a big financial guy, but that sounds good. It sounds great. Mm -hmm. 
It's Never be you be in your apartment for literally a month and a half out of a year. Whoa, that'd be wild. I want to do that. I just want to be on stage like constantly. <laughs> That's the dream. <laughs> That's the goal, <laughs> right? And yeah. then, and then be, I'm gonna pay my bills too. Wow, wow that'd be great too. Because yeah. I've been doing it for nothing, forever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the shorter goal is just not to have a day job. I don't want a day job anymore. Yeah. I hear you. I'm living proof. Yeah. I haven't had a day job in over 20 years. It's amazing. That's that's winning. That's yeah. a win. I'm glad that you brought that up because people always are, when you make it, when you if you make it, what you, you made. I made it. Mm-hmm. I, haven't had, I haven't had a boss in over 20 years. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I'm amazed at myself. And I live in fucking Texas where there's a whole new, you know, from having living in London during the peak of the, the comedy scene to coming to L.A. to see the peak of L.A. Now come to see the growth of Austin. Wow. It's kind of my third part of my play. Wow. Your yeah. Third act. Third act. Wow. I'm acting out. It's dope. And Austin has a uh, mantra that keep it weird. We'll see. Yeah, well, right. We'll see. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. They have their own idea mm-hmm. of what weird is, but I'm going to show you how you do it with shit under your nails. <laughs> That's pretty weird. That's totally weird. That's very weird. Thanks for being on the show, Jay. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Do they give you a J, Jason? Most people just call me Jason. Be- I'll go by Jay. I like Jay. I I get a uh, Rouse. I get a last name. Right. Yeah. And yeah. we are JRs. We are JRs, yeah. Yeah. My last name's not like quick enough like that. Rodriguez. No, but, but it is my one of my favorite uh, Latino last names it's a is good Rodriguez. One. It's one of the better ones. Yeah. For sure. It is a better one. There's some ones that are kind of like clunky. Too many vowels. Yes. Mm-hmm. Rodriguez flows. Yeah. It's hard. It ends with a Z. And okay. it also sounds like somebody that might fuck your wife. Right. Look out. Long game. Uh, <laughs> thanks for listening, everybody. We would like to see most of the human race killed off because it is unworthy. It is unworthy of the gift of life. I don't care what society thinks. They're nothing anyway. They're no better than me. Until we hear the safe word, we will not stop. Have you ever thought what it would be like to see a person's head Safe word with Jason Rock.